Welcome everyone to another edition of Kiwi Talks. My guest today has been in the music game for a long time, a long time. Um, he, he's uh, messed around with both hip-hop and rock, and um, you probably know him from Freak in the Club, but uh, it's an honor to have him here, my man JCK. How you doing? How's it going, Reese? Good, bro. How are you? I'm um, very good. Yeah. 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 It's good to be here in South South Auckland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much like that, eh? Hamilton's the, the kind of just extending uh, further and further south. Yeah. <laughs> So um, tell me, because how you got into the music game? Because I remember you, you used to be part of it. Was it a group, Dirty, D- JCK and the Dirty Ho Bags, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, that was a like a. Um, I went to Mains for like four years. Yeah. Um, I did the audio engineering um, diploma, two year diploma, and then I um, didn't really want to leave, so I, <laughs> I did a contemporary music performance for another two years. Yeah. Uh, and JCK and the Dirty Ho Bags was um, like a, my second year of the um, the music diploma. Uh, Were was, they? Did they go to Mains with you? Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and it was uh, it, it was kind of like a briefly lived thing, but uh, me and uh, Lou Ludbrook, who was one of the singers, um, just kind of we, we um, started a relationship and um, made music together and. Uh, we uh after about two years we got signed um to pagan antenna records and um we did uh we got funding we actually got it for another song called truly mine Mm -hmm. um and uh, we recorded it and uh lou the singer um was getting singing lessons at the time and she kind of like wanted to spice up the vocals and do it differently and she did it differently and it didn't really come out good (laughs) (laughs) so um I was like, well, we'll, do an, we'll, we'll try this song, Freak in the Club, instead, um, which we didn't actually get funding for, but um, we, but you we just, just did you it. you allocated the money to that. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, the record label wasn't happy with, with how it came, with how Truly Mine came out. I was like, what? I, I, I kind of think we should have just used the um, the demo, because the demo sounded mean. It was great. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. There was nothing wrong with it, but... Um, but they did, it wasn't up to their standard. <coughs> Um, did they say did they say know. specifically what they didn't like about it? Um they just said didn't capture the magic of the of the demo and I agreed and like it just didn't sound as good to me either. I was yeah. like, why don't we just use the demo? But I was like, Well, okay, let's try it on a, a different song. Um so we did Freak in the Club, um and I did I did um most of the production on it. I got a bit of help uh recording it in the little studio with uh dave rhodes who's a um engineer yeah yep. um were you taking tips off him watching what he does um he wasn't really doing anything that i i didn't, <laughs> that you know didn't already know yeah. yeah except he had ni- a nice sound card and um you know the yeah, nicer equipment and um, better microphones yeah um yeah. but yeah i actually ended up getting in there and um fine-tuning all the um not the mixing but you know like the editing and the timing and yeah and um <clears throat> did that and uh came out it came out good and um got on television and uh was played on c4 and juice tv for um it was on c4 for probably a couple of months and stayed on juice for f- forever like for like a year or something did you did you get royalties and, and stuff every time it was played on television or no no we didn't really get any uh like a lot of royalties for it i don't know why but um it was um all all hooked up and stuff for royalties but probably just doesn't pay much but um back in in those days um we're talking about like 2005 um it was actually a really good time for music yeah like, yeah like, like especially for hip-hop i think um, that was kind of when it was really hitting its stride or its peak yeah, yeah. um we had uh kiwi fm um and like i released our first album uh called uh uh five year anniversary um yep and uh that actually like was still my best um like the one that made the most money like it's probably not my best record like uh, album well no this is pretty hard on themselves but because of the the time um 
for some reason at that stage it was like the boost mobile thing going on and um yeah, that's right there weren't as many people doing hip-hop like there was only a few people doing hip-hop back then um no everyone's doing it now yeah everyone wants to be a rapper everyone this it's just so crowded now it's just like um ridiculously crowded <laughs> so oversaturated yeah so, i mean i see it all the time coming up on my facebook feed all these different all these different songs so yeah it is a it is a bit of a different time how uh, did you did you produce uh freak in the club did you do the music did you do yeah. the songwriting and everything for yeah, it? yeah I, I wrote it wrote the hook as well even the, the girl part yeah and to oh, see, okay. sing this <laughs> who who directed it who directed the video oh the video that was done by um some guys in wellington uh I can't actually remember the main guy's name, but um, there was a guy called James Manton who's uh, still still ticking along in Wellington, who was part of it. Yeah, he, he he wasn't like the director, but he was uh, he was the guy that came and picked us up from the airport and um, oh, the one right. that we made the like a connection with. Yeah, um, and he actually uh, went on to make um, another video of ours called Spirit X. And um, he also made quite a few music videos for Wellington rappers. Like he's done a couple for Turner Nose. Yeah. Um, but uh, what's that other guy? Buxton? Buxton, someone. Um, anyway, he's, he's, he makes music videos for people in Wellington. Okay, so you flew down there to actually do the <clears throat> video. Yeah, well, um, they, Wellington had, a, had a, an additional grant. Uh, like they gave you like fifteen hundred dollars if you shot there if you shot in Wellington. Oh, okay. So we went and shot it in Wellington, yeah. and they, but they have to put on the Wellington logo on your um on your video. So a lot of people thought we were from Wellington. Oh, <laughs> is that why I saw Wellington? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, okay. So that was quite funny, um, and that was an interesting experience because it's it was my first. Um, I'd never done. I'd, I'd never been involved in a music video before. Um, we showed up. They dressed us they um told well you're rocking like pretty fly gears and that man yeah <laughs> uh, i didn't i wasn't I, I didn't dig it at all like I, <laughs> I thought it was a misrepresentation of who i am yeah um, well i can i can see that now seeing all your other videos yeah and how and how you um what your dress attire is like in that but at, at the time i didn't know any better I just went with it you know, as you do. Yeah. What, what else are you going to do? Yeah, yeah. You I don't can't... really want to fight the system or anything. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know anything. Yeah. You know, what was I going to do? I can't. I, I didn't know anything about um, making music videos or anything like that. But um, it was a good learning curve, um, and it was uh, an amazing opportunity. Like um, a once in a lifetime opportunity. Really, it's never repeated itself. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, they're pretty stingy when it comes to funding. Yeah, they are. Um, I think we only got funding because we got a record label, um, and that was just uh, through Mains. Uh, Trevor Ricky from uh, Antenna Records came in to do a um, talk. Yep. And I basically was all up in his shit, like, "Yo, <laughs> you should check out this our band and stuff." And he he liked the music and he signed us. So. Oh, that's cool, man. Crazy, yeah. Good times. Um, yeah. Did you when you when you did um when the video was shot were you kind of looking over the director's shoulder kind of taking mental notes um <clears throat> oh just absorbing it all yeah just um uh basically yeah just just being there in in the environment was a was a massive learning curve yeah. i wasn't really taking notes it was like the first time i've ever experienced it but um mm. you know then we did our second one um with the same with with james manton um spirit x and then um it was like a really long gap in between those two, and that was because I, I was waiting for for these things to happen. Mm. You know, like after two years we of, of being um, of making music, I got signed and got funding, and and I, and I thought these things were going to keep on happening, but they didn't. You know, they just stopped stopped happening. And after about five years, we did Spirit X, and I was like, okay, these opportunities are going to come around. What? every five years yeah i can't wait that long <laughs> so yeah so then i kind of started taking things into into my own hands and um i had a, a friend called uh the robber uh, i don't know if you've heard of the robber he's a alternative rap artist who um, maybe if i saw his face 
Um, yeah, well, uh, he makes, uh, he was making his own music videos um, from the get go, and um, he influ influenced me a lot. So um, I got him to make uh, a couple of music videos for me. Right. Um, and I kind of, uh, like, I, um, I came up with the concepts and, you know, did all the, uh, like, the storyboarding and, and got all the, everything together and I got him to shoot them and edit them. Um, and then it kind of, I, I kind of went from there, like, okay, so all I'm missing is shooting and editing. I pretty much did everything else for those two. And then I just kept it rolling. I was like, okay, okay I'll do the shooting and editing and next thing you know, I'm making my own music videos. Mm. And uh, I'm, I think I've made 35, 35 music videos. You've done quite a bit. I have to I have to tell you something. So when uh, I first saw Super Heavy Rap Shit, I was like, "Holy shit, this video is so good, so so good." And then when I I think I, when I met you, I think it was at the Cipher gig, and I asked you, I think I asked you, I'm like, "Oh, how did you do that?" And you just like, oh, "I just use everything green screen." Yeah, and I, it made me just want to oh, okay, I got to get my own green screen set and really um, get into this. So. Yeah, man, you inspired me with that stuff, bro. So thanks a lot, eh? You're welcome. Yeah, <laughs> I think I, I think I've influenced quite a few people <laughs> with with that, you know, that the um, do it yourself kind of. Yeah, well, um, it's 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 easier and it's cheaper. Yeah, I and, mean, because I there was a few videos I got done. The first video I did was with Day Harmo actually shot it, um, and it was uh, the Never Forget the Name video, and I was kind of taking mental notes as. Um, uh, he was directing it but then I got a few other directors there was one that did the West Open Cypher and one who did Where You At and I was looking back at them and I was thinking man if I knew what I was doing I could probably do this way better yeah and so I just I watched a lot of YouTube videos on how to do it yeah yeah and that's and that's how I got into the whole music video thing yeah and I prefer it that way actually because I'm a bit of a control freak yeah I'm sure you're the same yeah yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Well, I think when 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 you're making something that represents you, it's better if you have creative control. You know. Well, only you will really know the vision of it and yeah. how how it is in your head. Only yeah. you can really do that. I mean, you can try and explain it to someone, but they're never really going to fully get it. Yeah. Or just come up with something completely different. Yeah, they're like, that... oh, no, nah, we can't do that. We'll just do this. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, which can work if, if they understand you and and um, and they come up with something even better than what you can, but that doesn't happen very often. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or at all, <laughs> depending. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure for some people it does. <laughs> so, because you do, you do both hip-hop and rock. Yeah. Yeah. How, what's your approach to uh, composing when you're doing either one? Um, do you approach them in the same way? I do actually, yeah. Yeah, um, that's interesting. Yeah, uh, I, I've learned a lot from hip hop. Um, it's kind of a long story how I got into it. I started off in rock and metal. Um, I, I picked up the guitar when I was 15. Um, I was in high school bands, like kind of like a hard, hard uh, like virgin on death metal kind of music. Yeah. Um, in high school and then um, I went through a phase where I uh, when I was at uh, music school where I was like a singer songwriter played acoustic guitar and sung and um, then through mains um, we, we did a whole bunch of genres from country music right through to um, everything country blues rock reggae um, didn't actually have a hip-hop module but it kind of I wrote songs for all those and kind and kind of discovered that I, I'm quite versatile at songwriting yeah well i can i've seen that with just some of your stuff you yeah you can go from one one extreme to the other yeah very um, very creative so i kind of started i i um i was uh basically when eminem came along um i was like holy fuck this is amazing it's like one of those you know just one of those artists that that uh makes you go makes you stand up and really fucking pay attention. Yeah, same thing with me, <clears throat> the exact same thing. Yeah, like I, I had similar experiences with um, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Nirvana. Nice. Um, they they really like influenced me a lot and kind of changed my world. Same with Marilyn Manson and um, Typo Negative and uh, mainly rock. But uh, when Eminem came along, I was just like, holy fuck, 
this is amazing um and it, i could relate to it as well it's like i could really relate to it i was like bugging out how much i related to it um like i'd been brought up with hip-hop um to some extent because uh i come from a mixed family like i've got uh maori sisters um and my older sister is a musician she uh she got me onto public enemy and um ice t and oh true um eric b and rakeem and um yeah, yeah. De La Soul and all this used to make mixtapes. So I kind of grew up with it alongside what my mum listened to, which was classic rock, um, Dire Straits, um, Bob Dylan. Um, it's a wide Led variety. Led Zeppelin. Yeah, so I, I kind of grew up, grew up with both. Um, so I just decided um, from the influence of Eminem that I was going to do hip hop. And I just overnight, I just started writing hip hop. Um, and uh, 17 years later. <laughs> yeah. Because how, how many albums have you done? Uh, five, I think. Five. Five, yeah, not, not shit loads, but um, I've got the sixth coming soon. Um, but they're not like seven track albums. No, they're, like, they're, quite, like they're quite 19 like, tracks. 19, 19 yeah. yeah, 20 tracks. Yeah. 19, 20 tracks, yeah. yeah. So you're definitely uh, getting your money's worth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in terms of material. Definitely. Um, yeah. yeah. Interesting. So, is there one genre you prefer over the other, or is it, or do you have the same amount of love for both? Um, well, I think from uh, f from how I feel today, um, I would say um, I'm definitely leaning a lot more towards rock music yeah um in fact i doubt that i will be going back to hip-hop um anytime soon what what's the reason for that what's um, the reason for well what's the reason for wanting to move towards rock and the the, the reason for why you don't want to go back to hip-hop is i'm wondering if I've you and i might it. be on the same page i've thought about it a lot um and there's so many reasons so many reasons and i'll tell you some um give me a couple give obvious a couple. reason uh hip-hop is youth culture um i'm getting older um <laughs> dude i feel exactly the same bro yeah <laughs> yeah um also i i'm a, i'm far removed from my circumstances as a as a youth like i grew up um in uh how do you say a like single single parent household lots of brothers uh, lots of sisters i had three sisters um in a state house and uh basically very poor um so that's why i related to eminem you know what i mean yeah yeah that um, makes sense. but now i'm older I, you know i've got my own business um i'm a white guy so basically i'm an old, old white guy with with a decent amount of money and it's like do i do i actually belong here still i think yeah. I, I had to i think i've taken a step back and evaluated my life where i am now and gone i think i might leave this yeah to, well to the I, young ones, I, yeah? I i kind of feel the same i mean i've gotten to the point where i feel i don't really have anything to rap about anymore i'm like what do i rap about i can't rap about hardships yeah you know yeah um so yeah i i totally get you totally yeah. understand totally understand um and and also uh another reason is um how much uh like i put in a lot of effort in, into this into hip-hop and i think for minimal return and it's like yeah i actually know a lot of people like that myself included yeah. you don't there's really no money in it to be perfectly honest unless you're in the one percent like yeah. yeah not even money just like um i think uh i think for how i see it is um the the in new zealand the audience is is uh you know largely polynesian um and i don't, I don't think that i relate to the i don't think they relate to me to be honest yeah that they're, they're the majority of of the listenership in this country yeah i think they they don't uh care what i have to say no matter how good i am or how awesome my music videos are yeah they look at it and go that's fucking weird and i don't relate to it <laughs> So, um, you know, um, that, that's a big part of it for me. It's like, well, I've got all these amazing skills that I'm um, using on uh, an audience that doesn't appreciate it. Uh, I might. 
would you go somewhere else would, would you ever goes. would you ever get into scoring music for film or video games or anything um i've thought about it no i don't think i would eh? no you wouldn't want to do it no i've, I've done a bit of uh like I've, I've actually got quite a lot of um like uh what, what do they call it production music yeah um with uh do you do you, um do people come to you hey can i have a beat or anything oh uh people come to me for music videos a lot but not really beats I, I don't even think people know that i make beats um because I, I don't really advertise it so not mm. really yeah. um but i've done a lot of production music for woodcut productions who are um they're actually the same people as uh move the crowd records oh are they yeah oh true i yeah. didn't know that i actually got uh signed with their other label when was this um 2013 yeah Oh wow! And I did um, Straight Jacket, um, Stroke the Cat, and uh, Meat Suit. Yep. Um, with them, and they were extremely bizarre videos, <laughs> and uh, they, yep. they didn't get what I was doing. Um, did they ask you? Did they just ask you straight up, like, what is this? Um, or did you? Or did you just try and explain it? No, I didn't care actually. Oh, that's, um, that's actually that's good though. Yeah, and I was just like, oh, this is what I'm doing now, and 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 I had a long break uh, where I hadn't really done anything, so it's kind of like getting back into my groove. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, uh, kind of refinding myself, and um, I see it as like uh, casting a line, like cast out as far as you can, get get as freaky as you can, and then pull it in. Like, um, and I think that's what I've been doing over the years is um, kind of seeing ha how imaginative and, and just totally out there can I go and I'll, I'll see what, what the results are and then um, go from there kind of thing. Um, so I think when you see the videos, you see that they get weirder and then less weirder, but still kind of weird. But yeah. <laughs> do you, so do you think up an idea or do you just start by jamming on your guitar or something and then the song ideas come from there? Um, or do you not have a, I suppose you have a combination of... I usually get like a, uh, like, while I'm working, I, I'll often um, just come up with a hook yeah, or something while I'm doing something else. Like music's always on my mind all the time. Um, so... I'll come up with a hook and then I'll figure out, well, uh, what, what's the, the thing that makes that um, melody or whatever? What, what are the chords yeah. behind that melody that, okay. that's stuck in my head? And then um, kind of just piece it together from there. Um, with hip hop, you have to, it's quite challenging because I don't use samples. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I yeah, I'm the same. I don't use samples either. Yeah. So. Um, because you have to, it's just copyright issues you run yeah. into and all of that. There's a lot of copyright issues. Um, so the, the challenge for me with that being a guitar player is, um, is minimal, minimalization, keeping it minimal. Yeah. You know, you can't like rock music. You can have a lot of, uh, different instruments and, and solos and, um, well, tempo I, changes. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, I find, I find with rock as well is the guitars tend to be front and center more and yeah. with hip hop, it's more vocals. Yeah, well, you don't, you can't get in the way of the of the vocals in hip hop. You have to have a very basic musical element, because it's not really about the music; it's about the the vocals. Yeah, well, then you run into problems sometimes because if there's uh, instruments within the within the song that might clash in mm -hmm. the same frequency ranges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is that is a problem. Yeah, that's why you find a lot of uh, tracks are almost just drums. You know, yeah 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 with maybe totally. just a little bit of instrumentation way back there yeah <laughs> but pretty much it's you know based around the drums and and um and i think in a lot of ways the uh the vocal performances is, is like the drums as well you know it's like rhythms rhythms yeah, over over a basic be. beat so yeah but so if someone came to you though and say hey we're gonna pay you 95k to uh score music for shortland street oh fuck yeah no oh, you you do it okay right. of course <laughs> okay sweet so there is because you said you wouldn't do it so i'm just wondering if you, uh, under certain circumstances well, whether you would yeah if someone pays you of course i would like it's like with music videos like everyone 
people come to me like, oh, let's work. And it's like, you don't have any money. <laughs> I'm not working. <laughs> you want me to do it for free? I can just tell. Well, that's no, what I everyone wants, ask. right? They yeah. want everyone to do it for free. Hey, come on, man. Yeah. Hook us up. You know, we're boys. Yeah. 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 It's like, nah. Nah. How with that? Nah. Yeah. Because then people just take advantage of you. Yeah. yeah. Um, like I, I made a, mu- uh, not a music video. I made an ad recently for D- uh, the Dione show. Um, which oh, was yeah. a cartoon. Yep. Um, but she paid me, so I was happy to do it. Um, but yeah, unless. Well, you're... I think I think you've got enough material, is in your whole portfolio to show what you're capable of. So, you know, so maybe in the beginning when someone's first, um, you know, trying to move up the ranks and trying to prove themselves, they need to build up a bit of a portfolio. But you've been in the game for so long. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah, I yeah, I don't expect you to ever do anything for free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good man. Good Fuck man. you. Pay me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually got um when I was about twenty one, I got offered, I got offered about ninety five k to score music for porn. Oh really? But I didn't take it <clears throat> for a number of reasons. Um, one of that being I was from a very conservative Christian household, so that would not go down well. Yeah. Um, I couldn't imagine my dad telling people, oh, yeah, my son, he's in the pornography industry. Yes. (laughs) And I also think uh, you'd become a bit numb to stuff if you were just watching it 24-7 or eight, nine hours a day, just writing music, just seeing all these sexual images all the time. Oh, you'd have to score it to the actual Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd have to have the footage and play to the footage and oh, i think if okay. you were just sing that eight hours nine hours a day i think it would probably affect you in the bedroom too because you just become so numb to uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so i didn't i didn't do it but i wonder i still sometimes wonder i'm like man what would have happened if i'd taken it gosh yeah i'm glad i didn't know probably go through lots of boxes of uh <laughs> tissues and have ninety five thousand dollars <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think I think it was it was only a contract for a year, so I only would have done it for one year, and then and then what? I wouldn't have known what was on the horizon, and wow. then yeah, that's an and then what I was going to get, and then go back to my ordinary job again. So I yeah, it was uh, a yeah. There were a lot of there were a lot of factors um, yeah. as to why I didn't do it, but I did build up a bit of a portfolio because I would be interested in doing um, short films or video games. Did you ever do the, because you know, I, I did um, the 48 hour film festival. Mm-hmm. Have you ever done anything for that? No, I haven't. I've um, got lots of friends who have. but uh... I got I got asked to, uh, it was really short notice. Like, oh, can you do the music for a, a 48 hour fest- film festival if we get a group together? I was like, oh yeah, sweet ass. And then we go to the, the, the place where you, you have to pick out a genre out of the hat, out of a hat. And out of all the genres we got, we got musical. Okay. But the way they did it is because you've only got 48 hours, they shot it all first. And a lot of these people couldn't even sing either. And I had to try and compose the music and make the music line up with their voices, even though it was off key. Oh, God, that sounds challenging. Oh, it was horrible. It was one of the top worst five experiences ever because I spent literally 24 hours trying to compose the music for it. And because you've got the strict as deadline. Yeah. Oh, man, it was so, so bad. So were were they singing or... They were singing their lines? Yeah, so I think, if so, I remember correctly, the premise of the, the that, film was uh, that the, they had a, a party for the baby, you know, like a, a newborn or something, yeah. and then everyone leaves, and then they put the baby um, to, to bed, um, and then they, they try to have sex, but the baby keeps waking up, uh-huh. and then they start trying to use all these sexual windows and stuff to try and... In put your the, put the, <laughs> to put the baby to sleep you know oh, um but it yeah so i had to try and turn like twinkle twinkle little star into kind of a sexual kind of enticement okay <laughs> but right. um yeah so they so they had melodies and stuff they were using twinkle twinkle little star melody or, well, or yeah something? they were singing it but then okay. I just have to try and add some music behind it. And then obviously you've got a director as well. And you'd be like, no, I don't want that. Can you change it? Oh, and he, for the last six hours, he was literally sitting next to me as I composed it. Yeah. And I was like, this is just nuts, man. Wow. Why did I agree to do this? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But, uh, yeah. So how do you balance? Because you still do music quite a bit. 
like you're on Facebook, you're doing live jams all the time yeah. and you're still putting out albums and you're running your own business as well. Yeah. Um, how do you allocate your time? Um, <clears throat> uh, my job's seasonal. So um, during the winter, I um, like at the moment, I'm working three days a week. Um, so, oh, okay, so the rest of the time, do you just do music? Yeah, um, on my days off in the studio. Yeah. Um, in the summer, I, I just don't have time to do anything but work. Yeah. For five, five and a half months of the year, I'm just flat out busy. Yeah. Um, and then the rest of the time, it, it's, uh, yeah, game on, music. It's interesting to me how many um, musicians rarely do stuff full time. I'm supposed to have um, Ryan Lovins. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's supposed to be coming on here at some point, and I'll probably be asking him similar things because yeah. he works and he's doing albums and, and he's got a touring, and he's got his podcast, kids. and yeah, and he's got his kids and stuff yeah. as well. So I just I I don't even know how he manages. He just doesn't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Well, I because I've um, last time I saw Dila. We were talking about um, how how yourself and him are probably two of the hardest workers because you guys are just constantly on the go, constantly making music. Yeah. Do you ever get burnt out? Uh, no, not no? with music. W with work, I do. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, but, 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 so is music like a release? Like, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. It's... Um, it's energizing. It's yeah. my it's my purpose in life. So yeah. So in a perfect in a perfect world though, if you could, you'd just do music full time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I'm hold, holding on to the hope that one day that that will happen. Oh, uh, who knows? Maybe someone will watch this and. Yeah. Who knows? Um, yeah, but it's, I I feel like it's something that I'll be doing until the day I die, and um, you know, hope springs eternal. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so if if. If you didn't have music, what would you what would you do? Do you think? Oh, far out. Um, I don't know. I'd probably just be a video game slob. Well, I know a few of those. <laughs> <laughs> Eighty hours. Yeah, I can't think of anything worse. <laughs> like I used to, I used to really like uh, arcades when I was a kid. Now, there's the thought of wasting my time on anything just irks the shit out of me. It's like. Well, yeah, I mean, when I think back to when I was younger and how many video games I played and how much TV I watched and I look back on it and I think, what a waste of time. Yeah. What a waste <laughs> of time. I don't want to get to the end of my life. And, you know, what do I have to show for it? Nothing. Yeah. Some people go, oh, I did 40,000 hours in Skyrim. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I guess if, if it's your passion, then, then it's not a waste of time, but... Well, yeah, I suppose if it, if it brings you happiness, but you probably you should have some ambition and some goals as well to get ahead in life. Yeah, that's my view anyway. I don't know. Ambition's pretty important. I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I think there's a lot of people that don't have any. Um, it's quite surprising. No, I I have to keep a a kind of hands length relationship with those type of people because otherwise it, you end up absorbing it and then i find i get demotivated yeah um there's a few ceos and things i'm going to try and um uh in terms of people that i'm going to try and get on here at some point so try and see what makes them tick and how they got where they got so mm. yeah it's always always aspiring i mean if you'd asked me two years ago oh you're going to do a podcast i'll be like i'm not interested in doing a podcast yeah but yet here i am Yep. It felt like the natural uh, evolution after music because it still incorporates audio to some extent and video. Mm. So, yeah, and I got my little mini set up. It's mm. my man cave yep. as well. And no one else is doing it like you're doing it yet, so that's good. That that, that I know of, anyway. Yeah, well, that's that's part of the thing, right? Um, because it, the problem is with hip-hop is, is how, how are you supposed to... Uh, be distinctive you know and unique when everybody's doing it and you just kind of end up getting you know you're just part of this group and um you, nobody nobody can really stand out because there's just so many people it's so oversaturated yeah yeah <clears throat> i remember talking to pox about it and he was just saying oh everybody wants to be a rapper these days everyone's yeah. rapping yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I and mean, it's actually really rare in terms of the rappers that i know that actually do it full time and it was actually uh, there's a there's a really really well known uh, rapper. I'm not going to say his name, but <clears throat> uh, you would think when you watch his videos and everything and his and his hits and stuff, you'd think that he 
he uh, made a lot of money from music, but no, he didn't. He was living in his mum's garage. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's a it's a reality um, check as to yeah it's 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 a hard life doing music. The possibilities of making money are pretty small. <laughs> yeah, particularly these days because everyone <coughs> just wants them wants music for free. And yeah. they can get it for free. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, man, that's a bit of a down buzz, eh? <laughs> it is. It, it, it's um, depressing. It is really. Um, especially when the amount of money you actually have to spend to make music is phenomenal. You know, it's not as... Oh, they just, people just don't know. It's not as... It's not as bad as it used to be like 15 years ago, but because um, technology is a lot cheaper, but it's still, you're, you're basically spending money to lose money. <laughs> um, yeah, it's one of the worst investments ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you're in, in it for the money, then um, you're going to be very, very disappointed. <laughs> yeah, well, I've, I've seen some people on my Facebook feed, you know, and they talk about making money. I'm like, if you're getting into music to make money, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. Yeah, yeah. Good, good luck with that. And when yeah. you figure it out, can you please tell me how you did it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd be the same. Yeah. So, I mean, I, for me now, it's probably it's probably going to just be a hobby that I do now and then when um, if somebody reaches out, hey, do you want to get on a track? Be like, yeah, sure. My partner's um, trying to convince me to go to India for a year. Oh, yeah. And just do music there. Yeah, because she she's got all these connections and stuff in India. Yeah, like maybe do a track in Hindi, but I'm I can't speak Hindi. Yeah, someone would have to write the lyrics. Yeah, and then I'd have to rap it. Yeah, but yeah. How long did you go to India for the last time? Uh, it was about I think it was two and a half weeks, three weeks. It was a bit okay. of an eye opening experience. Yeah, I definitely came back. Uh, there's definitely a before and after in terms of me after when i came back from there because it's it's the antithesis of new zealand in terms of everything yeah so you know there's and that's and i don't like i don't like bagging on the the country or anything because it um some of the nicest people i've ever met were there uh but it's just it's an interesting country it's very fascinating because i think they have all the tools to be the most powerful country in the world but the country is very divided between different uh, states and um, even more so than America mm -hmm. because the South doesn't like the West, the West doesn't like the North. Oh, they're not real Hin Indians. And then there's so much corruption um, and so much division, even in terms of religion. You mm -hmm. might have Hinduism, but there's different sects of Hinduism. And then there's the society pressures as well where – somebody um has to be a certain way because that's just the tradition casts yeah you got the classes i mean i saw so many slums when i was there it was um i mean i don't really cry much but i cried i cried a few times and some of the indians were asking me like why are you crying what's what's wrong i'm like i'm like no nah, this is just hard to watch like, no they're happy it's all good <laughs> i'm like nah man they're not the worst is seeing little kids that was the worst but yeah yeah, and then you come back here and you see people complaining because the government doesn't help them enough when there. I think that's why Indians have uh, a good work ethic similar to China because there's no government assistance of any kind. Mm. There's nothing. So it's like if you don't work, you die sort mm. of thing. Yeah. Um, I was telling the story to Absolutely. the, the la uh, my last guest, uh, Tracy, but um, my, um, my girlfriend's mum... So there were points where they wouldn't have power. But, um, and so if they didn't have power, they'd stand under a street lamp studying. Oh, right. For exams. <clears throat> Can you imagine someone doing that here? No. No, they no. wouldn't do that here. No. No way. No. No. So that's what I mean. So in, in terms of the, although it can be bad, the spin on it is that they, they really exceed in a lot of areas. That's why they go to places in the world and they, I think they do so well because mm. they, they have a drive because of, um, you know, the, the conditions that some of them live in. But then I saw both sides while I was there. I met really, really poor people 
who live in conditions that I don't even think people in prisons do here. Mm -hmm. And then I met real wealthy people mm. as well. I met a Bollywood director while I was there. Yeah. Yeah. Rich ass dude. Yeah. 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 So it's it's an extreme on both sides. I mean, it's it's if if, if um you definitely come back appreciating New Zealand more because there's just so much stuff we just take for granted here. Even seeing the sky and seeing the stars. Mm. Yeah. 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 So it's yeah. So we, it's um we live in a good country. We do. We do. And obviously New Zealand has a lot of problems, but they're pretty small in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. 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 I mean, there are some annoyances. I mean, I, I, I'd like to get Jacinda on here at some stage, eh? <laughs> Whether she'd come on or not, I don't know. That'd be interesting. Yeah, I mean, there'd be a lot of questions mm. um, I'd ask her. But would you ever do politics? No. Under no circumstance would you do politics? Um, I, I'm just not smart enough to do <laughs> politics, man. <laughs> well, Tell that to Trump. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. Ah. Uh, I think I think him becoming president has kind of all bets are off now. Yeah. It's basically open Pandora's box. Anyone can Anyone be, be president. I mean, I saw something about Oprah wanting to run and The Rock wanting to run. It's yeah. just like oh. Kanye. Yeah, Kanye. Yeah, yeah so uh, all bets are off. Kanye doesn't seem that bright, but um, yeah, he'd probably make a great president. Yeah, not. But then I wonder how much. <clears throat> power the president or even a prime minister really has right because they don't it's not a dictatorship there's mm. still because i um i recently met some people who know quite a bit about the council here mm -hmm. and i would say the council here will be similar to the council in auckland and christchurch they'll probably all be structured the same but apparently the mayor does the mayorship doesn't actually hold a lot of power because mm. it all comes down to votes they all have to vote and yeah yeah so Mm. Well, I know in uh, the the president, uh, the president in, in the states, they usually can only actually get things done if they're supported by the Senate and things like that. You know, if, yeah. If they've, if the Senate doesn't want what the president wants, then nothing happens. I think there was a big problem with Obama's. Um, well, he wanted to keep putting stuff through. And <coughs> I think because he wanted to change gun laws a number of times and the Senate were just like, nah. Yeah, no, they weren't having it. Yeah. Um, whereas I think uh, Donald Trump has got a lot more support, so he can... Well, but yeah, because he's a Republican and the Senate is mainly Republican. Yeah, so he's gonna, he, he can actually get more through, but um, whatever. I don't, I don't, politics is just one of those things that <laughs> annoys the shit out of me. It's like the same with religion and... Like there's there's no nothing. well this is this is this is the interesting thing that I want to talk to you about because <laughs> you and I kind of we we have a similar story in terms of well because you used to be a Christian yeah yeah and I used to be a Christian yeah. and now we're like nah yeah nah. what so were you were you born and raised one or did you become one later in uh, life born and raised yeah um, born and raised as a Christian um, so uh, basically. Once I kind of got away from the isolated uh, environment that I was mm. in, you know, when I left home and became an adult, and um, didn't it, it actually um, took a while, but uh, I think I, I I stopped for a moment one day and took stock of things and went, "What the fuck do I believe in? <laughs> this is just..." But was there was there a light bulb moment, or was it a, it was just something that happened over time? Were you just starting to question things, and then eventually, like, oh, how would this? I did have uh, a, an event that kind of made me think. Um, I was at uh, my sister's church, and um, a lady prayed over me and told me that I've I'd never known Jesus, and I didn't know um, the love of God or some. Something like this, and I was, I was like, "That's not very Christianly of you. That's kind of like a." How would you know? I think she was just a spiteful person, to be honest. I think she was maybe having had issues and wanted to take it out on me for some reason, yeah, a, a, in a very unusual way. Um, I, I, and it just made me think, "You're not a good person." This is kind of like, uh, you're almost like um, putting negative juju on me and you're supposed to be a Christian. And it made me, like, it, it just made me think, what, what's, what is this religion that, that I'm a part of? And, and from there, I kind of um, just 
took another look at it and thought, it's probably bullshit. Like, what are the chances of this being for real? Pretty fucking slim, really, isn't it? Well, yeah. I mean, it, it's it's something that can't be proved as wrong, but it can't be proved that it's right either. And I, this has become even to, to me since moving down here, because I used to be part of um, a church and I went there for ages. I did serving and I did the sound there and knew heaps and heaps and heaps of people mm. for years. And then as soon as I moved down here, didn't hear. There's none of the people from my church contact me except one guy. Shout outs to Khan. Um, but everyone else, they just, they didn't care. And then the more you start hanging out with, uh, people from a different religion or a different environment, you start to realize why, why would this, what, what makes me think that this is the absolute a hundred percent right way? Cause the thing is every religious person thinks their religion is the right religion. Yeah. 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 And yeah. usually your religion is the religion of your parents. Yeah. So then I was wondering, I'm like, have I just been conditioned to believe this? Because if, yeah. if, if you think when you're growing up, you're taught all these things. And when you're a child, your brain is like a sponge and mm -hmm. it has to absorb a whole bunch of information. Yeah. And if, if that's, if church and Jesus is, is placed with importance as much of, as doing your homework mm -hmm. and taking your vitamins, mm -hmm. you know, then, um, then it becomes a part of you. I was actually talking to this with my um, my rapper buddy, Dr. Hayden, mm -hmm. in terms of emotional identity. Yeah. So if you grow up with something and you identify it with it for so long, you feel like it's a part of you. Absolutely. So you can't separate yourself from it. Yeah. So it's if you grow up a Hindu or a Muslim or a Christian, you know, and, and that's been your belief for so long. Mm -hmm. Well, one, I think part of it is, oh man, if I, if I don't believe in this anymore, then I've wasted all these years and then i think the other part of it is, is no then how am i me i'm not me if i don't believe this yeah i'm i'm not me anymore um so it's real it's real interesting but i don't think i don't think like there is i mean i i don't put all religions on the same playing field because i think some uh Oh, a bit stranger or difficult than others. And I, and I also think stuff like the flat earth theory stuff, that's just modern day religion, really, <laughs> in terms of a whole bunch of people that believe something, even though that it's been proved wrong. But I do, I do feel if you are going to become religious, you should probably look at the exit strategy because... Uh, you know, as you get older, you're exposed to more things. Your your views change on on things as you grow older. And the good thing, I suppose, about Christianity is if you're not into it anymore, you can just leave. Whereas with something like Islam, you can be killed, you can be <coughs> disowned. You know, there's a there's a number of repercussions that happen if you leave. Yeah, they can legally kill you if you're an ex-Muslim. They, yeah, 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 and I, I, I kind of understand people who are born into it. You know, if their whole family's Muslims, then they choose to stay Muslim. I, I, I totally understand why that stays Muslims. But what I don't understand is why someone would convert who has no, yeah, attachment to it. Like, I'd love to have Sonny Bill Williams here, mm. so I could ask him, like, yeah. why, why did you? And that's not to knock on Muslims, but this is just religion as a whole. It's actually, um, I read somewhere that atheism is growing faster in the world than any other religion. Atheism is not a religion. It's not a religion. Yes, I know. It's, it's, of course it isn't. But what I mean is it's growing faster in terms of the view, yeah. views on it. Yeah. Um, I think uh, religion is more, more of a cultural thing, really. Like, um... Yeah, uh, there is an element to it. I mean, New Zealand was founded on Christian principles, but it's actually one of the most secular countries in the world. Mm. A lot more than the states. The states is, is just like mad on religion, Christianity. I like all my, I've got dozens and dozens of cousins that live in Chicago. That They're all, you know, Trump supporting Christians. And it's just like... Have you, have, um, I've seen a few, because uh, I'm sure you know about televangelists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know about the 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 seed faith concept no. where so basically because you know how you tithe 10 percent yeah <clears throat> and if you give uh basically it's if you give your money to god 
then he will pay you back tenfold. Right. So what these televangelists do is they say, oh, send your money to our church. You know, feel the presence of God <laughs> and he will reward you. Send us $10,000 and he will give you $50,000. Yeah. And th these people send it yeah. and they send it. And it's crazy because a lot of the, the people that they're preying on are uh, poor people or yeah. people who don't really have much hope. Yeah. Oh, it just pisses me off, eh? Well, they, they say the... Um... The, the, uh, it's a business there, pretty much. <clears throat> the antidote to religion is um, uh, oh, fuck, I'm a dumbass. The <laughs> antidote to religion is learning, um, is education. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> well, it's contact, right? If you if you start if, because it comes back to the whole, you know, people who believe what they want to believe, they'll find something to justify what they believe in. So if you Usually Christians will hang out with other Christians. Muslims will hang out with other Muslims. Hindus will hang out with yeah, other Hindus, right? Isolated. Yeah, isolated, yeah. The, the, the greatest weapon against that is to expose people to different religions. Like when I was in India, we went to this temple there. Um, and they were, they were praying, I think it was to Ganesh and giving money and stuff. And I was looking at it thinking, this is weird. See the elephant god. Yes. Yeah, yeah I was thinking, this is weird. But then I was thinking to myself, I'm like, if I grew up here, I wouldn't think this is weird. Yeah. And then I'm like, maybe if they came to New Zealand and they went into church, they'd be like, this is weird. Yeah. Praying to the dying God man full of pain. Yeah. On the cross. Why, yeah. <clears throat> you know, so it's uh, part of it's, yeah, I, I do agree. I think part of it's cultural. Um yeah, education and what you've inherited from your parents, what they teach you. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's but, hard to shake a, a lifetime of brainwashing. You know, that's essentially what it is. You know. Well, the perfect example is Israel <clears throat> Folau. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like I, oh my god, that guy, man. I wasn't even. The thing that really made me scratch my head was. So he, first of all, he says something he must have known when he first sent the thing on social media about homosexuals, mm -hmm. that he was going to piss a whole bunch of people off. Yeah. Yeah. But he still did it anyway. And I'm like, okay, fine. Maybe that's just bad judgment on his plus, uh, on his part. But then he did it again. He did it a second time when he'd already been warned from the, um, what is it? The Australian Rugby Union, yeah. I think it was. Yeah. yeah. And, and then he gets sacked. And then he goes to his church. Now, he knows that the church posts videos of all their sermons online. And he goes and does this sermon that just got him fired about homosexuality. So I was just like, oh. But the thing that really got to me was when he started asking for money. That was the thing that pissed me off. Because I'm like, dude, you own, what, like $6 million worth of assets? And yeah. you're asking people to give him money. And people gave him money. That's like yeah. that's the thing I don't get as well. Probably because they're saying, oh, freedom of speech, freedom of speech. But I'm like, you're representing a country. You're representing an entire sport. Mm -hmm. Like, you have to uphold a certain image. Religion is a very powerful tool to manipulate people. Like, um, yeah. <clears throat> that's why it's still here, because people realize this and use it to manipulate people it's like a psychological cup handle that you can grab people by yeah you know? i i will say this though i don't think every single religious person obviously has a bad heart or anything and there is some good i mean people go and help the poor and all that in the yeah. name of religion so there is there is good aspects <clears throat> to it yeah. but yeah there is definitely some parts where i'm just like uh oh, you know i mean i just I mean, I, I, it's funny me saying this because I used to be so hardcore into yeah. it. So to be on the other side of the fence, but I yeah. can understand why people are religious, whether it's whether they're raised that way, whether it gives them a sense of hope. That's comforting as well. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, I enjoyed the community aspect of it when I was at church and catching up with people. Mm. I mean, that aspect I do, I do miss, but it's, uh, it's quite sobering thinking that there's, um, you know, not being sure of what's next uh, in the afterlife. But, yeah, Be well, believing that you know the answer is yeah. 
quite comforting, you know. Um, <clears throat> and Christians essentially believe that they know the answer. Well, Hindus believe that they know the answer. Yeah. Muslims think that they know the answer. Yeah. You know, it's... Nobody knows the answer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I watched this movie the other night called Hotel Mumbai. Yeah. It's about the uh, terrorist attack in uh, Mumbai back in 2008, I think it is, where basically a whole bunch of terrorists seized uh, a hotel there and killed a whole bunch of people. It is brutal, bro. Like, it's absolutely brutal. Like, my, my partner made me watch it because she, she, obviously she lived in India when it happened. Mm. She wasn't in that city, but it was, it was probably, to them, it would be our Christchurch shooting. Yeah. 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 And I was watching it, and it's so graphic. I was getting so angry, eh? Yeah. Because it's all in the all in the name of religion, and because I'm not sure if you know this, but India and Pakistan have been at war for ages, decades. Muslims versus the Hindus. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's just, it's so sad, it's so sad, and um, you know, and then there was obviously the in Sri Lanka where they killed a whole bunch of Christians on Easter and that was in retaliation for yeah. this white supremacist killing all these Muslims. It's just, ah, oh, just a it's vicious never, circle. Vicious yeah. Cycle. It never ends. Yeah. It's never ending. It's um, sad. Yeah. It's a bit of a down buzz, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, this is the reality of, of this day and age. It's probably pretty similar to the rest of history though, you know, with, um, yeah, well, religion starting conflict. That's what it does. Yeah, well, man, I I would imagine that a lot of religions. Um, I would like to get a theologian on here, someone who studied multiple religions, mm -hmm. because I'd imagine there's a lot of um, a lot of the the teachings would intertwine. You know, that all that all be similar across all the religions. Um, <clears throat> I know there's I know um, there is some similarities between Hinduism and Christianity. But it's just presented in a different way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think back in the day, probably people would have created it as, as a means to control or to give people hope or something. But as obviously as <clears throat> time has evolved um, and science has proved a lot of things. This is the funny thing, right? Every time science proves something in religion that's that goes against it, they'll move the goalpost. Yeah. Yeah. And I, 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 I'm saying this because I used to do this. Yeah. I used to do it every time science would, no, 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 not evolution. No, it doesn't mean this. It means that or something. Oh, no. Dinosaurs existed when Adam and uh, they, they were on Noah's Ark. This is stuff I used to say. This yeah. is what I'm like. Yeah. So I can see it qu clearly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they, they say um, if it's proved by science to be wrong, they say it's um, an analogy or or something like that, or, you know, like a um, metaphor that, you know, they don't actually mean. Yeah, it's not a literal, it's not, not a literal, literal, it's metaphoric. And yeah, it's like, yeah, well, literal interpretation. Pretty sure it's literal. <laughs> it's like, um, what, so the Noah's Ark was a metaphor because you can't, you, you can't prove that penguins swam from Antarctica to, to get on the Ark. <laughs> I don't know. No, the the whole thing. The, the thing about Christianity is the basic fundamentals don't make sense. Um, so God <coughs> created mankind in His image, but they were imperfect, so He drowned them all, except for one family. Yeah. <laughs> and then <coughs> He sacrificed Himself to Himself to save us from the sin that He gave us. It's like fuck's going on here <laughs> it's, like, it's laughable right and this well is... it is it, it is it is now but back in the day it probably wasn't you know? well i think back in the day like people weren't literate they didn't have access to to the word to the scripture um it was doled out to them by the the priest um you know they were pretty much kept in the dark and, yeah. and it was a way of manipulating masses they could tell them whatever they wanted, yeah. really, and the people wouldn't know. Education was uh, was not widespread. Yeah, this this conversation is probably going to piss a lot of people off. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it's just our view. 
it's all good. Uh, at the end of the day, people can believe whatever they want to believe as long as they're not harming anyone, um, I guess. But unfortunately, it's easy to radicalize people. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's interesting. And it's not to say that non-religious people aren't bad. I mean, China is an atheist country and they do some pretty dodgy stuff. So <laughs> so I'd, I, um, I'd, I'd, I don't think it's... Um, but then I I think maybe it is it, it is cultural and yeah and it comes back to cultural and education and what you've inherited from your parents yeah yeah, yeah for yeah. sure yeah so are you what is, have you got a new album coming out currently right um, <clears throat> so currently I've um, I've been working on it for the last three months and I've written twelve songs and twelve songs yeah over how long three months oh yep. Yeah. Um, Actually, 10 songs, because two of them are f from a long time ago. So, yeah, 10 songs. And... Yeah. But uh, I've made the music. Um, I'm, I'm looking for a band. So if you're watching this and you are a badass drummer, guitar player, keyboard player. And how, how big do you at, want to make the band? Um, well, I'm, 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 at the moment, I'm using backing tracks. So uh, a drummer is probably what I need first. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, go from there but um i would actually like to have a band um <clears throat> i'm calling i'm not going under the name jck um for this one um what's the name gonna be uh black velvet butterfly so it's like a, a, where did you come up with that name um <clears throat> it just reminded me of um like like uh the the album's got a lot of gothic aesthetics um and that just reminded me of a, a little kind of gothic creature a black velvet butterfly. Um, it's kind of similar to Nine Inch Nails, I guess, with yeah. alliteration. Um, you know, with Trent Reznor being like a one-man band kind of thing. I was like, I'm kind of like that too. Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, okay. Yeah, I just like the name. I was, uh, I was searching for names. I actually had a whole slew of names, and they were all taken. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard to find a band name that someone hasn't used. Um, well, I, when I came up with Kiwi Talks for this podcast, yeah, somebody had already taken Talks with an S, so I had to change it to a Z. Yeah, yeah, I was like, ah, oh, because that was the name. I spent ages trying to come up with a name. Yeah, and yeah. I was trying to think of all these different names, and then my brother suggested the name, and I was like, oh, it's a good idea. Yeah, I'm gonna take that, bro. He's like, yeah, all good. <laughs> but yeah, so sometimes just creating a name is is pretty difficult. How many so, names did you go through? A lot, a lot. Um, probably 15 or so um and J jck for instance there's so many other jck's it's ridiculous yeah well you type jck into youtube or google and it comes up with a whole lot of different stuff yeah it's, a, it's mad there's just so many it's yeah. Like, fuck. <laughs> yeah you got, really gotta think outside the box it makes it difficult <clears throat> yeah so um so are you planning to so you want to form a band and you want to do a lot of live gigs and yeah and so forth yep. yeah um but I don't have any of that yet, so I'm working with what I do have. Yeah, yeah, yeah fair enough. So, fair enough. Um, you know, I'm not let, I'm not going to let not having a band stop me. Yeah. Um, just going to move forward. and. Um, there must be some people in Auckland. I mean, there's who... I fucking hope so, and I hope they get in contact no, I mean, with me. <laughs> yeah, well, there's like one point, what, seven million people that live there. There's got to be some people that want to be in a band. Yeah. Holla, man. Holla, Holla JCK. Holla. Yeah, yeah if, if you're into... Um, gothic rock yeah. typo negative marilyn manson ghost um that kind of yeah area. I'll, I'll i'll keep an ear out because obviously i've still got a lot of connections in auckland so i'll definitely let you know cool um yeah i did um i'm not sure if you know this but i did uh i assisted with some of the production on a christian death metal band Oh, yeah. on their album yeah <clears throat> which is an interesting experience because they were so good in terms of their technical ability mm. and but their time signatures were all over the place i didn't know if it was six eight or seven four or something yeah. like, what the hell man because you know yeah. how hip-hop is usually just four it's four just straight four four, 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 four yeah. so it's really really consistent and it's all about rhythm occasionally but, you'll get a, a six eight but yeah that's but, about uh, it but that's about it but with the with these guys it was all over the place so yeah but um no nah, it was a, it was a really cool experience but it was 
I was told it's like you're not allowed to use any brass instruments. We only want strings and ambience. Um, but I still tried to push it. I think the reason why they got me to do it was because they wanted me to go in. They wanted to get someone that didn't have preconceived notions of what rock uh, music accompanying rock music or metal, I should say, sounds like. So I think that's why they got me because they thought I would approach it um, in a different way, which I did. I was adding... I hated some interesting stuff there. Some stuff, even though they told me, oh, you can't include a brass, I still tried to include it and they'd be like, nah. <laughs> they'd shut me down. Yeah. I just tried to see how far I could push it. Yeah. Um, but I used a number of different things from bells to pianos to yeah. harpsichords and even um, even some um, traditional G-funk synths, you know. Yeah, cool. Yeah, which they use. But they were obviously quite subtle. Yeah. Yeah, and they actually let me uh, fully compose the intro to okay. the album. Yeah, yeah. the band called Lead Us Forth, but yeah, it was it was it was, it was a cool experience. Very very different to hip hop, so yeah. that's why that's why I'm curious when you say, "Oh, uh, you approach it the same way in terms of rock and hip hop." <clears throat> um, but is a lot of your was a lot of your rock stuff four four. Ah, uh, no, it changes a lot. I I, I in this album I've uh, done a lot with. Uh, Changing between time signatures and also tempos. Um, yeah. Because you can't do that in hip hop. So it's like, well, can't do that in hip hop, but I can do it in rock. So I'm going to. Well, you can, you could try it, but I don't think it <clears throat> works. I mean, someone suggested to me, oh, why don't you do a hip hop song where it constantly changes tempos? I'm like, but then it's kind of not hip hop anymore. Yeah. Well, that's the thing that makes a genre is the, um, the elements that are, con I guess, would be considered um, cliche. But that's what makes the genre. It's like, well, yeah. It, otherwise, it's not that genre it's anymore. It's not that genre it's a anymore. Different, it's a different genre. So yeah. you got you got to use um, elements or or uh, I don't know things that are common in the genre. Or otherwise, it's not the genre. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, true. Sweet man. Well, um, is there anything else you want to add? I might wrap up here. Um. No, no. Shall, shall we do a performance? Yeah, we can do a performance. Play a couple um, of tracks from my. Do you, wanna, uh, do you just want to let album? everyone know where to uh, all your social media stuff, and if they want to get a hold of you, yeah, where to contact you? Yep. Um. So, if you want to contact me, you can get hold of me on jckinfo at gmail dot com. Um. If you want to watch my music videos, you can Google jck official music video channel and it should come up uh with my 35 music videos um i'm on everything actually to be honest facebook soundcloud <laughs> um every i'm on everything uh just message you and you'll you can yeah <laughs> i can provide um all the details in the uh podcast on youtube and Podbean and Spotify so yeah if anyone needs to find them I'll I'll link them there but cool all right let's get into the performances all right all right oh 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 Beautiful right now, I'm 
she could ever be in life They took away Your brightest day Now you are dark They never really care about anything at all Bury me in pentagrams Boots up to my thighs Put me in my pale makeup and blacken up my eyes Don't feel bad, I don't feel sad Everybody dies More beautiful right now than she could ever be in life Look at you with your intense blue eyes Pale skin, black behind Look at you 
Like a dead beauty queen Diamond souls is your poison Yeah Through the fall Ladies swaying slowly That no one seems to recognize You could be my new Aphrodite With those eyes that hypnotize Yeah Yeah Coming down from a messy trip, 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 She wonders if she should stick around a bit, 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 Coming up like a winter wind, 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 wind. Tomorrow's people never will. Look at you with your black bouquet Brunette in your eyes Look at you with your lips so black Making me feel so blue Look at you They all look at you Wanna touch the hem of your Oh, 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 oh.